Welcome, welcome, welcome. In today's video, I will be trying out some various fire starting techniques. We'll see which one of these things work, which one of these things don't. And we will be using a ferro rod and a ceramic striker, but you could also most likely use a knife for your striker. But for this video, I will be using my Wazoo Gearco uh, Viking Whetstone Pendant setup. So, first things first that I want to try is duct tape. I hear this stuff takes pretty well. Um, some people say it doesn't take, some people say it does take. Eh, we'll find out. I may have to free the edges, but we're just going to see what a few good strikes onto the sticky stuff does. Nothing right off the bat. It does kind of burn the duct tape some, but it, the duct tape does not catch fire. So what we will try next is fraying the edges. So I'm going to take my knife here. I'm going to cut the duct tape. We will yeet this into oblivion. I'm going to try to just tear the edges apart here some, being careful not to poke myself with a knife. I doubt this is going to do anything, but let's give it a try again. Aiming for the frayed spots. Nothing. Now this is not duct tape duct tape brand, this is some cheap knockoff stuff, so that could be part of it, but yeah, doesn't hurt to try, you know? Electrical tape, about the same, kind of what I expected. I want to try some paracord here that I have frayed the tips of here, make it very fuzzy. I'm using an Altoids tin here so that I can isolate and snuff the fire should something take. Nothing should, nothing should burn down with this way. So here we go. Let's actually hold that right there. See what happens. Nope, that's just going to be shaking it all over the place. Now I have caught this stuff on fire in the past. So let's just take some strands here that I have. We'll break this up, get it all fluffy. It would help if the sparks landed on the, on the paracord. I'm getting some stuff here, but it's not taking as well as I had hoped. Now, this could be a, we're, we're hoping for a stage one, starting here where we get a spark to land and take. This could be good for stage two, where you've got it taking, but it's not quite took all the way yet. It still needs a little bit of help. So, let's take some dryer lint. This is just, you know, you clean out the lints on your dryers. This is the stuff that you get. We'll lay this down, see what we can get out of this. Match hook. Close that up. That actually worked. That actually took, kind of melted some of the paracord. Cool enough to touch. Still got some left. So, if you get dryer lint out of your dryer, 
stuff that, keep that dry, fluff it up a little bit when you go to use it. That stuff works. Now this is bamboo chopstick that I have frayed and just dusted off here, like so. We'll see how that stuff does. And again, all these contents are dry, they are not wet. So in a rainy situation, some of the stuff may, that does work may not work. I know I'm holding this kind of far away from the tin, but you would normally hold it closer. Do not fly over there, fly in here. Okay, so like I have burnt some of that, but not, not great. So this kind of tinder may not work for a small ferro rod if this was a longer ferro rod where you could really build up the sparks, this would most likely work. But considering that, you know, this is kind of a small ferro rod, you know, you're not quite getting the distance that you need to get stuff to take. But again, let's just try a little bit more uh, dryer lint here. Get it all floofed out. Don't burn on the ceramic. Yep. Stick with dryer lint. If you can get like a small waterproof bottle or something to put some dryer lint in for a camping trip, I highly recommend doing that. Having just tried this myself, that is pretty good. I do have one more thing I'd like to try if I can find it. Because I have recently just lost this sucker. It's around here somewhere, but I made some twine that I have here, some twine rope that I've spun myself, taking like one one row of twine and spinning up spinning it up into some bigger cordage here. Um highly fun project. That that that's something I'd highly recommend. Um we will try to catch this on fire if, if we can. Just some jute twine. Nothing fancy about it. Just trying to fluff the ends a little bit here. There's, there it is. This is what I'm talking about. This is a uh, bushcraft match for all intents and purposes. You push this out, you fluff it some. I have some oil soaked into the tip so that it should catch if uh, sparks hit it. See? And then you can whoo, turn that down. Uh, you quickly extinguish it if you need to. Um, but yeah, you can just take some twine and push it through a tube. I used a part of a of a zebra pin, the metal cylinder on a zebra pin for another one that I have, which is the one I wanted to find but can't find, but this one will work. This is from a window blind rod that you use to turn the, the blinds open and closed. Cut that off some, stick some twine in, make sure that it's soaked with some oil that does not evaporate immediately. I use three-in-one oil on this, actually. Um, and then you can just, you know, push, stick it out, fray it open, hit it with some sparks, and you've got yourself a bushcraft match. 
So I recommend this, because this is kind of fun, and I recommend dryer lint. Now in tandem with the dryer lint, as you can see in this container here, I have uh, the bamboo stuff. So, you know, if this takes, that should catch, and then you should just be able to, you know, start the whole dang thing. But this container here is not waterproof. This is just an Altoids tin. Um, this is not waterproof, so you could take some tape and wrap it like I'm going to right now. I've got some electrical tape here. We are just going to stretch that out and around. I know electrical tape isn't the most waterproof thing out there, but better than nothing at the moment. And then, you know, if you do get enough fire going, the tape itself will take eventually, which can be a beneficial thing to have out there in the woods. So, you know, there we go. We have our waterproofed tin of emergency fire tinder. I know this video is a little bit hodgepodge, but I just kind of wanted to see what would work, what didn't work. I know that the ferro rod is a fantastic invention, and I will always wear one because it is quick and easy to light and strike. And I just love this Wazoo Gearco necklace. These things are fantastic. You can get just the whetstone, like this. You can get the whetstone with the ferro rod and the ceramic. Or if you don't want the whetstone, you can get just the ceramic and the ferro rod. And this is not a Wazoo ferro rod. This is a secondary aftermarket one that I bought. The Wazoo Gerco ones are about the width of the whetstone here. This one's a little bit wider. But I do think the Wazoo Gerco ferro rods are a purer um, ferrocerium, which will spark better than this. This could be just a weak ferrocerium. But it's not a bad ferrocerium. As you saw, it did do the trick. But the just the whetstone on the necklace is about $40 to get the whole ceramic sparking rig here is going to cost you upwards of 60 to 70 dollars depending on how you want to do it i found it was cheaper to buy the whetstone necklace and then to buy the other parts afterwards and just assemble it myself this is a napoleon's claw that is the knot on this little piece here so you can just look that up to retie that if you want to untie the leather and stick the stuff on yourself and look up a napoleon's claw it's a fun little knot to do once you've learned how to do it. And I'd highly recommend going to Wazoo Gear Co. W-A-Z-O-O-G-E-A-R-C-O. My brain stopped working there for a moment. Wazoo Gear Co., all one word. They're on Instagram. You can look them up on Google. It's a great store with many great products. This is just one of many that they have. Dustin's a great guy. Highly recommend getting stuff from him. He's currently in Europe. As of the time I'm recording this, he was out in uh, uh, Czechoslovakia looking around f at some edible plants out there. That was a fun video that he put up on Instagram. So, this is what I'm going to always wear if I can have it on hand. This Viking Whetstone Spark. Viking Spark. This thing is fantastic. we will always wear that. In fact, I'm putting it around my neck right now. And... With that and one of my five pocket knives that I've always got on hand at any one time, maybe a slight exaggeration, but I do have a few sharp things on hand at any one moment during the day, um, I can create tinder from other stuff that I'm sure would be equivalent to this, such as a cattail broken up, those fuzzy round sausage things on long green sticks by the river. Um, those would probably work quite well. But I will always try to have some dryer lint on hand, if possible, or my uh, one of my bushcraft matches, as they are called by other people. So, with that said, thank you for watching this video. Hope you found it useful and informational. Hope it helps you build your camping ADC to your standards. And until the next time, farewell, carry well, and a bye-bye.